You're listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettians out there in Gwinnett land and all of you, all of my friends around the world. Hey, listen, it's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County, 78 degrees, going up to a beautiful high of 85. I swear, it's the summertime, but it looks like the temperatures are still dropping. I'm not going to speak too soon because, you know, we can have some really long summers here in Georgia. Right now, they're not so bad. I can't even complain. They're really pretty good. I, You know, we had some hot days. Like, one day I got in my car, it said like 103 or 104. I was like, woo, it is cold. It's hot. Not cold. It is hot right now. But anyway, it's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County. Today is Wednesday, yeah, July 13th. It's hump day, baby. You have made it to the middle. Yes, you have. I know somebody's saying, thank God. I know, I know, I get it. You guys are saying, thank God is the middle. I know, it's almost a weekend for you. I know some of you cannot wait till the weekend come. What you got planned, though? For real, what you got planned for the weekend? You know, my weekend used to be, my weekend used to start on um, Saturday. Now, now, y'all, it start, I mean, it used to start on Friday. Kind of started on Friday. It kind of started on Friday, but but then I, um, it kind of started on Friday, but then I decided I was going to produce a, a show on, 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 on Fridays, a live video show. So this coming, this coming Friday, I will produce my first live, well, here's the thing, I produced a live show before for Good Morning Gwinnett, but I, I will have to split up my Thursdays and do one part audio, one part video. And to me, that was just very stressful. And I kept saying, I gotta have, I need video. I need video for this show. And so it finally just, I finally just broke down and said, you know what? I'm just gonna record live video on Friday. So Friday is Power Power Player Friday. And so I got a Power Player coming on and um, on Friday. So make sure to check it out. Cause we got, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at a shirt y'all. It's so funny. I'm looking at a shirt. And it says donkey pox, like monkey pox, but donkey pox. That's so funny. I tell you, people come up with the grumpy old men, but here something. Let me see, I'm let me see. I dreamed of grumpy old men here. Something. It, I'm looking at some kind of advertisement. It's hilarious. But this will say donkey pox, and it's got like the Republican donkey on there. So that's funny. Anyway. Let's get on with the show. Today is July uh, 13th. It's Wednesday, hump day. You almost there. You got a couple more days on a wake up and you will be there. It's also National Barbershop Music Appreciation Day. Now, I don't even know. What is that? You got special music that y'all play in the barbershop? Because I'm trying to think. Did we did we even listen to music in the hair salon? I don't think so because most of the time we spend our time talking. I think guys do the same, though. My friend has a, a barbershop and he spent a lot of time talking. I don't even think I hear music inside his shop. His shop is right. His 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 uh spot is right across the hall from my office at the at the office. So I don't think I actually hear. I don't even think I hear anything. And when he, except for them talking, it's also National Beans and Frank Day. Yeah, if you like Beans and Franks, it's Beans and Franks Day. I like Beans and Franks, but it has to be made a certain kind of way. And not everybody can make Beans and Franks. I'm just gonna say everybody can't do it. Some people can, but some people can't. I could kill some Beans and Franks. I can kill a lot of stuff. So, my, so let me tell y'all a quick story. And I know I always got a story, but listen to this. So my brother had a cookout, right? And um, had a big cookout. And one of my friends asked him, could I cook? And my brother goes, well, I mean, um, I mean, I don't know because I don't think I've ever eaten her cooking. And I said to myself, this guy never ate my cooking. I don't think he's, because I don't like to cook, but I can cook. I can, if, if my mom was tell you, my mom was here, she could, she would tell you I can cook. I just don't like to cook. And I said to myself, he, my brother's never eaten my cooking. He has. He probably didn't know he ate it. He probably thought somebody else cooked it because I killed some beans and franks. I can kill potato salad. I can kill macaroni and cheese. I know he's eating that because my mom would say, you make the macaroni and cheese because you make the best macaroni and cheese. My mom would always say that at Thanksgiving. And so, and the baked beans, like everybody loved my baked beans. So he's probably eating my food and did not know he ate it because he thought somebody else cooked it because everybody know I don't like to cook. But I could, uh, I could fry some chicken, baby. I could fry some fish. I could cook now. You know, I think the only thing I can't cook for real, and this is because I don't like it and I've never tried it, is rice. I don't eat rice. Only way I eat rice is it has to be rolled up in sushi. That is the only way I can eat rice. 
other than that, you could you would never see me sit down and eat a bowl of rice or rice with anything. Like if my food comes with rice with it, I'm not eating rice. But if it's sushi, I'll eat it. So my brother probably has, he probably ate my cooking. I'm sure he did. I don't even probably. Because whenever we make potato salad and macaroni and cheese and baked beans and any of that stuff, um, he's eating it. He just didn't know I cooked it because everybody knows I don't like to cook. But yeah, I said all that to say I can kill a bean. And, I can kill a, I can make a kill of beans and Frank. So it's National Beans and Frank Day. It's also National Delaware Day and it's National French Fry Day. Now I know he ate plenty of my French fries because when my mom used to be working two or three jobs, we ate plenty of French fries because I cooked them. Right. And we my brother and I only a year apart. But she used to work two or three jobs to take care of the both of us. And I would French fries is one of my favorite dishes. Let me tell y'all something. This is how good I can cook. I used to make this hamburger that my aunts and my cousins, they all love. So when they came to his house for the 4th of July, they kept saying, you're going to make the hamburger? You're going to make that hamburger? It's a special kind of hamburger I make. And I used to make it. This is how I know I could cook. I used to make it for my aunts and uncles, who are my aunts and uncles. And they all remember that hamburger. My brother used to eat it too. I don't know what he's, not that I think about, I don't know what he's talking about. He's like, yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember anything she cooked. Bruh, I could burn. I just don't like to cook. It's not my thing, y'all. Like, I want to go, and when I cook, it needs to be something really simple. So, I, here's why, because I don't like spending my time in the kitchen. I want to get in and get out, you know. Um, I, but let me tell y'all something. I can make homemade biscuits. from. My mother taught me how to cook. My mother and my grandmother. I started cooking when I was about six years old. My grandmother, so, and I'm going to get on with the show. Seriously, I am, right after I tell y'all this. So, when I was about six years old, I was sick one day, and I had to stay home from school. And I had to stay with my grandmother. And I might have been a little, yeah, I was, I was, I had to be, I was, yeah, I was about six because I was in school. So I was about six years old. My grandmother passed away when I was eight. So I was about six. I had to stay home um, from school and I stayed with my grandmother. And so my grandmother made me a grilled cheese. This is my first time eating grilled cheese in my life. And I've been hooked on cheese ever since, right? She made me this grilled cheese. I was laying in the bed. I'm watching Bewitch and Flintstone and Jeannie and the Beverly Hillbillies. All, Adam's family, all the Three Stooges, the Little Rascals. These are the things that I'm watching on television. Eat Miss Grilled Cheese. And, and, I, and she gave me another one. I was like, oh my God. I fell in love with cheese right from that day. And I've loved cheese ever since, right? But what I realized is that she would let me cook. So the next time I got sick, so, so I said, I stayed home. I didn't feel good. And I helped my grandmother cook. Now, at my grandmother's house, there was no electric stove for a very long time. And I remember the stove was wood burning, like the like the houses were made, the way their house were made, it would it would be considered a townhouse for real, but not really because it didn't look like a townhouse. But you would walk in one center front door, to the left was my great grandmother, and to the right was my grandmother. So I remember being on on my grandmother's side of the house, and she had a wood burning stove in the kitchen, which means you had to put wood inside of the stove to cook. And my grandmother could cook, and all of my uncles and aunts. Well, I don't know all of them because I think one of them can't cook. That's the one they said was the laziest. The rest of them could cook, though. Um, all of them could cook, but they all learned how to cook on this wood-burning stove. So did I. So when I learned how to cook, my mother, would, my grandmother would get the the um, the aluminum pail, like the, the tin, pan, tin pail thing. I would stand on top of that and cook. So I've been cooking since I was about six years old. And so my mom got a divorce, and my brother and I would have to stay home. Like, until she brought us some food because she would drop us off food and go back to work, I would be the one in there cooking for him. So he was like, he didn't know I could cook, but I've been cooking forever. And I started when I was a very young girl. Six years old, standing on a tin can at the, at the wood burning stove, burning, baby, burning, because my grandmother could cook. She'd fry that chicken, and people be over there sucking their fingers. I can cook like that. I just don't like to cook. And I can make homemade biscuits. My mother used to love when I make my biscuits. Like, they would melt in your mouth. And I know I've been telling my husband that for years. And he said, you never make me any homemade biscuits. Which I didn't. You know, because I haven't cooked like that. Because he likes to cook. So, heck, well, we, we both don't have to cook. Anyway, let's get on with this show. All right, today is uh, Wednesday, July 13th. Let's get on with these horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Michael Thyssen. We're going to kick it off with Aries. Your partner may blame you for everything. Don't lend money to friends or contribute more than necessary to groups unworthy of your cash. Your ability to take hold of a situation will surely bring up popularity and leadership. All right, look at you. So listen, 
the fact that you can take hold of the situation it's gonna it's gonna make you be popular and it's gonna show that you have a leadership capability Aries so stand up and do what you got to do to get the recognition that you deserve okay okay Taurus do your own thing uncertainty regarding your direction is likely if you can't include them in your plans do so Here's the thing, Taurus. Do what you got to do. Do your own thing. Don't worry about what nobody else is doing. Don't wait for nobody else to do things for you. Do your own thing. Do your own thing. Today is National Do Your Own Thing Day, Taurus. Do your own thing. Gemini, you can mix business with pleasure to get favorable results. Don't be afraid to talk to close friends or relatives about press, pressing personal problems. Don't count on getting any help from those you live with. All right, I know that's disheartening, Gemini. But if you're expecting the people you live with to show up and help you, don't. That way you don't be disappointed. So have no expectations from them today because they're not going to help you. I, I know that's a hard pill to swallow, but swallow it and keep moving. Cancer. You are best to put in some overtime rather than get involved in, in family gatherings. All right. You'll be able to enlist the help of colleagues who believe in your ideas. You must be careful not to trust anyone. Oh, listen. Listen, Cancer. What is going on? Listen, I will say this, right? You got to trust somebody, right? Just know who to trust. You can't trust everybody, but you got to trust somebody. Everybody has to have someone that they can trust, at least one person. So just be careful who you trust. I'm not going to say don't trust anyone, but be careful who you trust. Leo, you have a lot to offer. You just hate waste, and when someone else costs you dearly, you see red. Someone you live with will be quite unreasonable today. Yeah, you have a lot to offer. Here's the thing, Leo. You need to let people know. I got a lot to offer. Sometimes we don't know our self-worth, right? We don't. We discount ourselves about, you know, about who we are and what we're worth. And so we don't feel like we have a lot to offer. We bring a lot to the table. But for the most part, everybody has something that they bring to the table. Everybody. Something, right? You may not even recognize what it is, so you don't know the, to bring it to the table. That's a lot of the problem. Like, you don't know that, you know, you are a great listener, you know, and you could bring that to the table because someone needs to talk to you. So you have a lot to offer, Leo, so stop selling yourself short. Virgo, things are looking good for you, so open your eyes and get to it. Finish up on any correspondence by early afternoon. Try not to argue with tri about trivial matters. Listen, listen, Virgo, don't waste your time with that nonsense. If it's trivial, don't waste your time. Move on. Don't, listen, it's not worth the energy. Put that energy into something that's going to mean something that you're going to enjoy that's going to make a difference. Okay? Okay. All right, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after this song to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrology and Micah Thyssen. Stay tuned. <laughs> from this world Running on a hamster wheel But searching for something I can't feel I just wanna
astrology bell currently bringing you the daily horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Micah Thyssen. We're going to pick it up with Libra. You'll be overly sensitive when dealing with your personal life. You are best to avoid joint ventures and whatever you do, don't lend to friends or relatives. Work quietly behind the scenes. Whatever you do, Libra, whatever you do today, don't lend to friends or relatives. I always say this, right? I always say this. Don't lend what you cannot afford to lose. That, it's that simple. Because some, somebody's going to hear me say, listen, Libra, don't lend to friends or relatives. That's what the horoscopes are saying. And they're going to do it anyway. And then they won't get paid back or they're going to get like, you know, like this, this, they're not going to get the praise or what they felt like they should get because they decided to lend to you. And then they're going to be, then you're going to be upset, Libra, right? When your stars are telling you don't do it in the first place. However, somebody's not going to listen. They're going to do it. Then they're going to feel bad and feel neglected or feel like, you know, unappreciated or taken for granted when the stars just said, don't do it. So you can listen to the stars or you can do what you want to do. But just know today is not a good day. In the meantime, just stay behind the scenes. Do what you got to do. You don't you don't need to be out front today. You need to be behind the scenes. <clears throat> Scorpio, don't expect new acquaintances to be completely honest about themselves. Look into ways that you can make extra cash. You can make financial gains through your unique and creative approach to business. All right, look at you talking money today. All right, listen, look into ways to make the extra cash. Scorpio, there are so many ways. I'm telling you. All you got to do, seriously, y'all, all of you, everybody listen to the sound of my voice. If you need some extra money, all you got to do is go to YouTube and click on Side Hustle. That is a, listen, you would think that word would die out. It is so many side hustles right now out there. All you got to do is go look on YouTube and just type in search Side Hustle. You're going you're gonna to find so many unique side hustles. It is unbelievable. I can get lost just looking at side hustles, right? Because I'm on YouTube every night. That's how I fall asleep at night. I fall asleep on YouTube. Yes, YouTube is on your TV. If you got a smart TV, pop YouTube on there. I fall asleep watching YouTube every night. Ask my husband. He'll tell you almost maybe once in a while is not. I fall asleep because I fall asleep early. But for the most part, the, the last thing I say tonight at night to my remote control is YouTube and the TV turn. I speak into the remote control. I speak. I say the word YouTube. And the TV turns to YouTube. Yeah, you know, smart TV, smart remote controls. You're just talking to them these days. I know, right? Go figure. All you got to do is talk to the remote control and it changes the channel. So when I say YouTube, my whole TV changes to YouTube in my bedroom. But anyway, Scorpio, if you need to figure out how to make some extra cash, just go to YouTube and, and, and search Side Hustle. There are many. I'm talking about all kinds from some part-time jobs to how to start a notary business, to how to start a shoe business, how to start a t-shirt business, how to start a coloring book business, literally a coloring book business. I'm, I'm not playing. I'm not playing with y'all. How to start a puzzle company, anything you could possibly think of, you can find a side hustle to do it on YouTube. Now, that being said, understand, understand that although these are your side hustles to make extra cash, they're not just going to magically make you cash. You have to, you still have to put in the work. Like you still have to do the work to make the money. It's just the ideas that you're going to find on YouTube, right? You can find some work. You can find some information about how to make it all work as well, but you got to do the work too. Don't go and all oh, this junk don't work because you stopped doing it after like a minute. It's not going to work. Let me just say, let me save you some time. If you're not planning on putting in some time, I'm talking about some serious time and effort into that side hustle to make the extra cash. Don't even bother starting. Because it's going to take you some time. Even though it's a side hustle, you're going to keep your nine to five. You're going to work it for a little while. Every Listen, every every extra bit of time that you have is going to have to go into that side hustle so you can start making the money. Otherwise, get you a part-time job. That's all. If you don't feel like you want to put the time into starting the side hustle, go get you a second job and make the extra money. You know when you go work at Walmart, they I think they pay like $15 an hour, you know, on the midnight shift, stocking the shelves for, you know, for a couple of hours. You're going to get paid. Side hustle, if it's a business side hustle, oh, you got to do the work work. Same thing. You just got to work, though, until you get paid. So you go get the part-time job. As soon as they say you're hired, you go to work. The next couple of weeks, you get a check. Not so with the side hustle business. Not going to happen like that. Unless, unless you put in a lot of hard work. It could happen. Sagittarius, you must be sure not to be frivolous because, as the saying goes, easy come, easy go. Concentrate on your work and yourself. You will be drawn to individuals who can provide you with both intellectual conversation and physical passion. Look at you, Sagittarius. You got the best of both worlds. Let me tell you something. 
intellectual conversation is sexy. I'm just saying intellectual conversation is sexy and that could lead to physical passion. I'm just saying, but let me say this. Not everybody like intellectual conversation. People, some people just like to laugh and joke around me intellectual conversation. I like to laugh and joke around too, but I like a good intellectual conversation. Oh yes. Yes. Like we talking about something for real. Like, yes, yes. That could listen. That's why it's going to be physical passion for you today. Sad. Because you're going to feel all warm and mellow because of the conversation. And later, this is a family show. That's all I can say right there. Stop right there. Capricorn, you could come into extra cash. You need to do more research before you make your final decision. Family outings or a quiet stroll through the park will lead to stimulating conversations and a closer bond. There's that word again. Listen, stimulating conversation. Listen, Sagittarius and Capricorn, that's what I'm saying. Intellectual conversation, stimulation, stimulating conversation. They're my kind of conversations. I like them. We could talk stimulation. We could talk in, intellectual stuff. I love them. I get caught up in that type of conversation. I have a hard time making small talk. I'm talking about a really hard time. Like, that's why it's so hard for me to network. Because think about this. When you are networking, it's really small talk. Unless you actually sit down and have conversations it's a bunch of small talk, and I have a really hard time doing that. Intellectual conversations, stimulating conversations, I love them. I love them. Aquarius, you can dazzle members of the opposite sex with your quick wit and aggressive charm. Camping, swimming, biking expeditions should all be considered. Children will want to help too. All right, camping. Let's say this, right? Go camping only if you are prepared to go camping which means you need to have everything together. Swimming and biking expeditions, are you in shape? Can you physically do that? Especially a biking expedition. When I hear that word, I feel like that is like, ooh, that just sounds like a long trip down like barren roads. I don't know. That's for you though, Curry. That's for you. In the meantime, you can dazzle members of the opposite sex with your quick wit and your aggressive charm. Look at you, you charmer. You go ahead, knock them out. Knock them out the box. Knock them out. You know, that's, that's a slick break. All right, last but not least, my fellow fish Pisces, raise your self-esteem and your self-confidence if you want to get back into the mainstream again. Exaggerations or deceptions coupled with overindulgence might be a problem. You need to distance yourself from situations for a little while first. All right, listen, listen, fish, don't be exaggerating, you know what I mean, and be deceiving folks. First of all, if you're exaggerating, you're lying. So don't do that, right? And don't be trying to just, listen, karma is a mother freaking and it's going to come and bite you in your butt. So don't be deceptive, right? And try not to be overindulgent. All is going to be a problem for you today. Watch yourself. This is what you're going to do today. Listen to this, fish. This is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. You're going to distance yourself from all of the nonsense, all of it. Don't be lying. Don't be overindulgent. You're going to distance yourself, fish, and you're going to work on you. Today is a day just for you. Work on yourself. Work on raising your self-esteem. Work on raising your confidence. Leave all the garbage in the garbage can. All right? I ain't, listen, I ain't trying to indulge in none of that. I got to go speak to these kids. I need to be on my best on my best behavior. I need to be on my game because I got to go speak to kids who are watching me. They're going to be listening to what I say. And so I can't be up there talking nonsense, right? I ain't doing it, Fish. I'm suggesting that you don't do it either. Spend that time figuring out who the heck you are, building that self-esteem, building your confidence so you can get back out there and do your thing. We got big things to do, fish. We ain't got time for this nonsense. All right? All right. That's all the horoscopes I got for you today. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Nodo the Strong and Micah Thyssen. Now let's get on to some news that you can use. All right, this is, a, this is a really hard story for me to even talk about, and I wanted to talk about it because I felt like this family needs, this young lady needs some help. So anyway, um, and she's not in our area, but when I, when I read the story, it was, it was scary. You know, it was disheartening. It was just sad. And I, you know, she needs help from everywhere. So there's a young woman. She graduated from Georgia Southern University in May with her master's degree in chemistry and biology, right? She went to the chiropractor to get an adjustment and she was fine. And then a couple of days later, she was having some problems. Now she's in ICU and she's paralyzed. They seem to think that when she went to get her neck adjusted, it caused some damage to some nerves in her neck because she became ill. Now she can't walk. 
I'm like, so they saying that her recovery is going to be a long, hard recovery because some of the arteries in her neck um, were, were dissected. Oh, my God. What kind of... Let me tell y'all something. I went to the chiropractor one time, and I still feel like to this day that has a problem to do because I have neck problems all the time, which I didn't have before. Well, I had them. I had back problems before, and I had really severe back problems. So I went to the chiropractor, and he did an adjustment on my back and my neck. But when he adjusted my neck, my neck has never been the same. And I never went back because I was like, this man hurt. And I told my mama, like, that man hurt my neck. I never went back to him after that. And so because my neck was fine until he was like, well, I'm going to do a full spine adjustment with your neck and your back. And I said, okay. My back felt better, but my neck felt horrible. And I, to this day, I have problems with my neck. As a matter of fact, I told my husband last night, squeeze my neck because I'm, I'm always having like headaches and I'm and always having problems with my neck. And I probably need to go get an x-ray, but I'm not letting anybody adjust anything. That's not going to happen. So I, I did that. So, you know, this is a, a horrifying story. And, um, she is in the house. She's, she's recovering, but she needs some help. Her name is Caitlin Jensen. Caitlin Jensen. She has a GoFundMe page set up, um, and it's at um, her name. So just go to GoFundMe.com and type in her name. It's C-A-I-T-L-I-N-J-E-N-S-E-N. Caitlin Jensen. She's 28 years old. She just graduated with her master's in, in May and um, probably going to go on and do some great work. So we're going to keep Caitlin up in prayer. But we need you to go out and support her campaign to help her get back on, get back and recover. They said her her, her road to recovery is going to be a long one because she it paralyzed her. Like whatever her brother said, we were talking in the morning, and thirty minutes later she was in ICU, just like that. That is so scary, y'all. That is so scary. So anyway, they have set up a um, GoFundMe page for her, and um, yeah, support her. Now let me let me just say this. I'm gonna say this. And I'm not saying this to talk about, to pro, to promote a service, but it just came to my mind. So a lot of you probably have heard me say this. I am a financial advisor. I don't talk about it a lot because I love podcasting more. However, however, if she had had an insurance policy right now, um, a lot of those policies have what's called a living benefit inside of them. That used, that used to not be the case. That policy was only valuable once that person had passed on. But somebody decided to change that. And so whenever there is a, a sickness or illness that's like terminal or very bad, like she has right now, you could take a portion of that money out of that policy and you could put that into a bank account so you can use it for such things as these. So she's very young. Nobody, she probably didn't even think that she needed an insurance policy, but you do. And so I said all that to say, if you are listening to the sound of my voice right now, and you think that you could possibly use a life insurance policy, just know that a life insurance policy is not just for people when they die today. That used to be the case back in the day. An insurance policy was just for people once they passed on, and then your your beneficiaries would get the policy, and they would take care of your funeral arrangements, and you know maybe you have something left over for them later. Not now. Policies have what's called a living benefit cooked into the policy so if you get cancer or some kind of terminal illness or some kind of sickness certain sicknesses you will be able to use some of that money out of that policy right now while you're still alive she needs a policy like that but it's too late if she didn't have one already and i kind of figured she didn't have one because they have a gofundme page if she did have one she would probably be able to take that policy and take out up to 85 percent of the of the face amount of that policy so that still, so they can help her with her medical uh, bills right now. So um, that's how important it is. Now, if you're in the state of Georgia and you're listening to the sound of my voice, if you're in the state of New Jersey and you're listening to the sound of my voice, if you're in the state of North Carolina and you hear me talking about this insurance policy with the living benefit attached to it, it's in there. And and, and if you're in any, any other state, just reach out to someone who sells insurance it let me tell y'all something this and this is sad but you have to pay attention if your kids play any kind of sports there should be a policy on them because you never know if they're gonna god forbid god forbid they have an accident god forbid it right that they have an accident an accident and then you don't have the money to get them the proper medical attention that they need if you have a insurance policy in place the right kind of insurance policy in place you could take that living, that living benefit 
uh, portion out to provide the, 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 the finances you need to make sure that they get the proper medical care. You have to, I'm a licensed agent, right? I'm licensed in Georgia, New Jersey, and North Carolina. So if you know that, that you're listening to the sound of my voice, and I, you rarely hear me talk about this because I'm always talking about business, but just looking at this and it just, as I was about to close, it made me think about, oh, well, maybe if she had had a, you know, a life policy, which nobody's probably thinking about that, um, they wouldn't have to do a GoFundMe, y'all. No, normally, a GoFundMe is when people have passed away with no life insurance. She's still alive, and she has a long road to recovery. Just imagine if she had had a life insurance policy that her family can go and pull that money out of her policy right now instead of doing GoFundMe and take that money and put it towards her rehabilitation. That's all I'm saying. I know for some people these are grim things to talk about, but that right there... That's one of those things. And it may not happen again in another 20 years. But if, if that policy was in place, you know, she could, they would have had the money. In the meantime, I don't think they had it. So support her and help her get back on her feet. Her name is Caitlin Jensen. And I'm going to spell out her name again because I need you to go to GoFundMe and support her. It's C-A-I-T-L-I-N-J-E-N-S-E-N. C A I. T L I N J E N S E N. I don't know Caitlin. I just read her story and I, you know, I wanted to share information so you can support her. Go to GoFundMe.com. GoFundMe.com. And her name is Caitlin C A I T L I N J E N S E N. And support Caitlin. And if you are in North Carolina, New Jersey, and Georgia, and you know that your kids are out there playing sports and you don't have a life insurance policy on them with the living benefit built into it, Email me, Audrey, A-U-D-R-E-Y, at noise, N-O-I-S-E, media, M-E-D-I-A, dot U-S, and put insurance in the subject line. I will help you get that policy in place, okay? All right. All right, I'm going to go. That was a little heavy, but I wanted to make sure I try to get um, Caitlin as much help as I can to help her recover. I'm going to go to a song. I'll be right back after this song. Right back after this song. Um, with more of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County and beyond. I was yours for the taking. Guess I needed a home. But if I'm not mistaken, you were good on your own. Oh, and I know, I know I was drunk enough. Didn't know.
daily rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. The Sugarloaf Community Improvement District recently expanded by 22 taxable uh, partials, adding more than $212 million in appraised value. The district was formed in 2016, and the expansion will bring in uh, bring it to a total of 114 taxable parcels, according to a news release. Yes, expansion, baby. It says, we are thrilled that the property owners have made the decision to invest in improvements that will benefit the greater Sugarloaf community, said Nicole Love Hendrickson, chairwoman of Gwinnett County Board of Commissioners. Um, with last month approved the district's um, request to expand. They approved that. Now they're going to be expanding. The expansion includes Sugar Mills, Sugarloaf Mills, and the area surrounding it, and commercial properties on Sugarloaf Parkway, North Brown Road, Seaver Road, Duluth Highway, Atkinson Road, Satellite Boulevard, Metal Church Road, Boggs Road. Some of the properties are high-end office buildings, according to a new uh, release from the district. Sugarloaf Mills is proud to be part of the um, improvements that the CID is making. So they're going to be doing some, some big things over there in the Sugarloaf uh, area. It's already nice over there, though. It's already nice over there, but they're going to be expanded. Listen, Gwinnett County is growing, 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 and growing. Um, in a minute, it's kind of, we're going to have to ask ourselves, where are we going to live? I'm just saying, because it is going to be like that type of thing. Because it's growing so quickly, you know. So it's going to be, it's going to feel like Jersey in a minute. Because it's growing really, 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 really quick. Really quick. All right, listen, 1,500 students, not students, 1,500 teachers attended an orientation. Remember earlier, uh, late last month or earlier, yeah, I think it was late last month, I talked about teachers that were saying, you know what, we're out. We can't do this anymore. The kids came back from COVID. They are out of control. They are on, listen, the kids are nuts. And a lot of the teachers were burned out, which is funny, y'all, because I told y'all the story about my brother. So my brother, my brother has taught in inner city schools for a very long time. And when he came to Jersey, he went into the schools. He's like, I am literally bored because there is nothing going on because all the time he was stopping the fight. And so he come to Gwinnett County schools and the kids are just, maybe they're talking, maybe. I haven't heard him say anything, you know, um, which is funny because he's like, man, these teachers. So he, you know, he's kind of kicking the teachers back in a little bit because He's so used to being with them kids that will fight him. Not only fight each other, shush, them kids will fight. Like one kid, let me tell y'all something. This how this he taught in inner cities, right? Someone called me one night. We were at a football game somewhere far away, right? I was in Georgia. My brother was at a football game somewhere far away. I was in Georgia. He was at a, he was a coach. He was a football coach. He was somewhere far away on the bus, of course. One of my friends pass by the school where they park their cars so they can get on the bus and go play football. So they passed by the school and he called us and he said, so we, we called my brother Candy. Said, yo, I just passed by the school and um, looked like all Candy windows are broken out in his car. So my brother got a Mercedes Benz, right? I said, what? So now I'm freaking out because like, who would break out my brother's windows in his car? Like the windows were broken out. So I jump on the phone, cause on the phone and call my brother's best friend because I know I can't call my brother because he's on the football field coaching. So I called him. I said, Kimball, listen, they're going to come back from the game. I said, somebody has broken out all. Now I'm in Georgia. Somebody has broken out all the windows in his car. Please, please, please go over there with him. Right. So Kimball, sure enough, Kimball meet my brother at the bus when the school bus pulled back up into the, into the stadium for the kids to get off the bus after the game. All the windows are broken out. Guess who did it? The kids, some kid that was mad because my brother um, put him in disciplinary action because he was fighting during the day. So he broke out all the windows. Crazy. So, but that, that's the inner city, right? And my brother was really calm. He knew who did it. He said he knew who did it. I think the kid later fessed up or whatever. I don't know if he got in trouble or not. He broke out all the windows out of my brother Mercedes. And I was so afraid. And my mom was so afraid. After that, after that event, she was extra afraid because if my brother, who was highly respected in, in the school system, in the county, in the freaking state, if somebody could go so far as to break out all his windows, that put us on high alert. So we were afraid. So when we talk, when I was telling him about, you know, the, the teachers were saying, you know, the kids was just, just out of control for this school year. He was like, what? Because he knows the kind of kids that he actually dealt with. Now, that being said, I'm not discounting any teachers. I'm just saying what he was saying, which was funny. Um, but anyway, we have 1,500 new teachers, 
um, that, that was in orientation. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that our teachers have everything they need to, to support our kids, right? And maybe because we do have such good kids most of the time, any kind of slight difference is a lot for our teachers. My brother, on the other hand, he was used to having difficult kids because he's been teaching for 20-something years in inner cities where the kids are very different. You know, they're very different from my kids here in Gwinnett County. So the fact that the kids weren't listening because they were home for a year on the pandemic watch or under pandemic control or whatever you want to call it, and then they got to go back into the school and into the classroom and be be the same as they were, that may be a have may have been a little bit difficult for our teachers. And so a lot of the teachers said we can't we can't take it. We're not we can't do this. These kids are out of their minds. But we have fifteen hundred new teachers that said, you know what, we're up for the challenge. We want to come into the system. We want to make sure that, you know, we can come in and provide something to the kids that are there. And so they got a warm welcome from the from the superintendent as well as other uh, school board members and other teachers who shared their stories. And so it's a long story and a bunch of pictures. If you want to know more, you can go to Gwinnett Daily Post and read the whole thing there. But, you know, we want to make sure that our teachers have the best of what they need. You know, Dr. Therese Johnson was there. She was talking. I'm talking about a, a room full of folks. You know, and the 1,500 teachers is a lot, but we have 180,000 students. So we need the best of the best in our in our schools, right? Uh, we need... Um, we need to make sure that our teachers and our and our supporting staff are happy and and and, and well paid and and get the resources that they need to make sure that they provide the the, the best education for our kids, you know. And so you know, my brother is, is a part of the Gwinnett County school system right now, and he you know he just came from a different place. He came from a place where he was a disciplinarian because he needed to be, you know. And he went into a school where the kids barely talk. And he's he's trying to figure out what is wrong. Well, the kids are different. You know, we they they're not the kids growing up in inner cities. You know, now if he had went to an inner city in Georgia, maybe may have been different. You know, but right now we have fifteen hundred new teachers that I would like to welcome them to Gwinnett County and to our school systems. And um, you know, hopefully they do a great job of working with our students and making sure that they get the things that they need to learn. And all of that good stuff. All right. Speaking of schools, um, Peachtree Corners is planning a joint back-to-school event in Town Center Playground Grand Opening. So it's going to be a joint venture. So it's going to be all at the playground. That's a nice playground too, y'all. I feel like I want to get on that ride. It's a ride I'm looking at. I don't know what it is. It's very nice. But anyway, Peachtree Corner is using the opening of the New City's Town Center Playground to hold a back-to-school event for residents. The playground grand opening and back to school event will take place um, 10 a.m. on August the 1st. Um, the Peachtree Corners Town Green, which is located at 5140 Town Center Boulevard, it will include a ribbon cutting for the playground as well as an ice cream truck, bubble machines, balloon animals, face painting, and bubbles with bubble with the bubble lady. So this is going to be August the 1st at 10 a.m. So school is about to get ready to kick back into session. Um, we got back to school uh, events coming up back to back all around. We got we got pack the buses going on. We got back to school events coming up in Snellville. That's going to be um, hosted by GCC Great East Side Chamber of Commerce and and um, uh, oh god South Gwinnett High School. I got a brain fog. South Gwinnett High School as well as some other surrounding supporters like myself. Good morning, Gwinnett. So these and that's going to be July thirtieth. So if you want to attend, that's going to be a block party, back to school block party over July 30th over in, um, in, in at uh, South Gwinnett. Um, so if you want to come out, have some fun, get your kids some, some school supplies and get them back out there so they can get ready to learn for the new year with these 1,500 brand new teachers that they got. So, you know, and, and it's going to be a lot of those. So just check the calendars. It's going to be calendars all over back to school events, pack the bus events, free book bag giveaway and school supplies. At this event on the um, first, you're going to have roller slides where multiple kids can use. So this park, this park is probably, let me tell y'all something. I just got finished talking to someone. I was doing a consultation at 9 o'clock, right? And this person, of course, wanted to start a podcast. And she was saying, we don't know what equipment to buy. We kind of been borrowing people equipment. I was like, well, why are you doing that? Our libraries have the best equipment that you could buy for pot. He's like, really? I was like, yeah. They got some great equipment that you can just go into the library and use. The parks and the libraries here in Gwinnett County are some of the best I've ever seen, ever. And I love libraries. I used to spend a lot of my times in bookstores and libraries because that's my 
that's my that's my, my my meditation place right bookstores and libraries I love them they have the libraries and when we moved to Georgia and we saw the parks we were like that's a park the parks are beautiful and these are some of the be- most beautiful parks in a city in a, in a county I've ever seen so I know that the one that they're about to do the ribbon cutting for and peace recorders is, is going to be just as nice. So check out some of the equipment that's going to be on the playground. It says a we go swing, which lets multiple users work together to swing up. Oh, that's going to pr- promote team building. I'm just saying, I'm just saying and collaboration, um, a roller slide where multiple kids can use it side by side at the same time while getting, getting a sensory experience. Again, a 36 foot lounge spinner, where parents and kids can relax and spin together. That sounds beautiful. The PTC tower, which has two slides, a climbing structure, stairs, two towers, and a bridge that is designed to look like a miniature version of Peachtree Corner Bridge that spans Peachtree Parkway. Sounds wonderful. The figure eight shaped Qantas net structure. Have no idea what that is. The unitary poured in place rubber, which is 12 which is a 12 foot rubberized structure that is designed to be accessible for people who use wheelchairs and walkers. That, that's what I'm talking about. They have thought of everything. I'm telling you, we got the most beautiful parks and playgrounds I've ever seen. All right, listen, I'm going to go to my last song. Then I'm going to come back and give you my word of inspiration for the day. So stay tuned. I'll be right back to inspire you before you take your day and go on your way.
welcome back, welcome back. So listen, guys, that's all I got for you today. But before I go, I want to give you my words of inspiration. And here it goes. It says, you don't have to convince anybody of anything. And you don't have to attract someone's attention. Ooh, let me say that again. You don't have to convince anyone of anything. And you don't have to attract someone's attention. Norwegian Wood. I don't know. I guess that's the person that said it. A Haruku Marakama. Haruku Haruku Marakama said that. Norwegian Wood. You don't have to try to convince people. You know, I talk to a lot of people a lot about a lot of things as it pertains to business. And I used to find myself trying to convince them as to why they should be in this space. As to why they should grow their business. As to why they should make the investment into themselves. And I realized... Not trying to convince you anybody of anything else ever again. I'm gonna share what I know. I'm gonna share my advice on what you should do, and it's up to you. A lot of times we try to convince people because we see we see what's good inside of them. We see what they could be, right? And we're trying to convince them to see that. We can't convince people that of that. We can't. You see the good inside of somebody, you see the potential that they have, and you want them to be that thing. So you're trying to convince them to step up and be that thing, to step up and do that thing. And they're just saying, yes, 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 and then they do nothing. you got to stop doing that. Just share what you know, what you want to share, and, and, and move on. Just let, like, share and move on. Let it go. Stop trying to convince. I used to I used to try to tell people, oh, my God, this is why you should have a I just tell them, no, this is what the podcast is, consists of. You know, there's a lot of resources out there for you. And I do this all the time, and I find myself doing it even more now. But I think it's because I'm at a I'm at a point in my life where I don't want to try to convince you of what's good for you. I don't want to try to convince you of why you should have certain things for your business. Either you're going to feel like this is my business and I will do anything for it. And if I talk to someone, listen, if I had to go start a podcast, am I going to talk to the person who podcasts once a month or am I going to talk to the person who podcasts seven days a week? Which person are you going to talk to? If you're going to go get... Get get your toenail, your ingrown toenail removed. Are you going to go to the person that removed ingrown toenails? Or are you going to go to the person who put on eyelashes? It's that simple, right? Because now the person that do ingrown toenails and the person that do eyelashes are two different people. And that may be a crazy analogy, but I'm just saying, stop trying to convince people. You know, stop trying to make them want to be with you. Stop trying to make them listen to you. Don't. Just say what you're going to say and keep it moving. It's up to them. Once you give people the information or the resources they need, it's really up to them. And I don't care if you are in business. If you are in business and you're trying to sell something to somebody, stop. Stop trying to convince them to buy from you. Just say, this is what I do. And I've learned to do this, y'all. I didn't just, I, this thing, you know, I, I, I had to learn to do this. I used to try to convince people. Now I don't try to convince people. Here's what I would say, though, and I'll give you a prime example. Someone reached out to me a year ago. They wanted to get on my network, Right. And I was like, sure, this is how much it costs to get on the network. So I got a bunch of different reasons. I'm going to get on next week. I'm going to do this. And I was like, okay. So now the price has gone up to get on the network. You can't come back to me a year later talking about, I want to get on the network. Every time, the longer you wait for something, the more expensive it becomes. So just think about that for yourself. If you reached out to help people and they kind of dragged their feet because they weren't ready, that's, that's nothing you can do about that. You know, you are more valuable a year later. You know, what you have to offer is more valuable a year later. So you have to stop trying to convince people, share information, and keep it moving. That's what I do. I share a lot of information. And then I keep it moving. And then and then but what I what I will tell you is that sometimes people people think that you're gonna keep sharing. Nope, you you share and then you cap it. Now if you want more, now you gotta pay. I've shared with you what I thought you should do, and you can go do those things because you don't need me. But if you come back to me, you got to pay. And I had to get comfortable saying that. All right, that's all I got for you today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you spent the last 56 minutes with me, and I love and appreciate you for that. Listen, if you missed any episode of this show, be sure to go to goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen to past episodes there. And listen, check this out, right? Um, In about... And at 1130, I'm going to go live on LinkedIn with Wise Women Invest at 1130 with Callan Shoemate. We're going to be talking about wills and insurances and investments and all that good stuff. So be sure to go over to the Noise Media uh, LinkedIn page at 1130. We go live. Follow, follow the page. Follow me. And when we go live, you'll get a notification saying Wise Women Invest is live. It's going live. So you'll know you don't want to miss it, right? So be sure to do that. Wise Women Invest. Go to Noise Media on LinkedIn. 
follow the page, follow me. And when we go live at 1130 or whenever we go live, you'll always get that notification so you don't have to miss an episode. Starting on Friday, I will be going live on goodmorninggwinnett.com with my interview with Power Players. So be sure to tune into that as well. But you can go to goodmorninggwinnett.com for that that live and click on the tab that says watch live and you can watch the show live. Um, so do that as well. All right, so listen, that's all I got. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. God willing. You guys stay safe out there. And again, thank you so much for listen, listening. And until next time, my friends, until next time, make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.